Hi folks, I just had to show you this. Just the simple addition of a piece of tubing makes it so the C-cell palm can be used lying down. There's a small hole here which you cover with your finger whilst toking and then at the end of the toke you just open up the hole and suck the remaining vapour out and it really does work like an absolute charm. You don't even need to open your eyes, it's easy to do by feel and it means that not only can you get comfortable before blasting off, if you're using MAO eyes then when you're on a come down a top up is simplicity itself so highly recommended if you've got or you're thinking about getting one of these palms. But back to the topic in hand. For a long time I was put off trying DMT because I'd read trip reports and imagined it was all going to be a bit too wild and scary. The only psychedelic I'd add up to then were mushrooms and I found them to be really useful for exploration but also quite brutal on a number of occasions too and I'd just assumed that DMT was going to be like a super intense mushroom trip and I just wasn't really ready for that at the time. But when I had a suggestion to do this video uh, I wasn't sure that my first experiences were going to be all that interesting. I mean, I know some of you folks have had solid trip experiences right from the very start, but it really wasn't like that for me. What I endured was like one long session of repeatedly scorching my lungs and endless coughing. And also, I just had a permanent sore throat and very little psychedelic effect to show for it at all. And I've got to be honest, several times I came to within a millimetre of giving up altogether. My first vaping tour was a homemade Gordo Tech Dreammaker, and I've actually spoken to some folks who seem to think the world of this, but despite considerable efforts, I only managed to get very limited success out of it at best. However, just before I totally gave up on the Dreammaker, I did actually manage to have some occasional moments of trippiness with it. <laughs> and the first of these was when I realised during the holding in of another really harsh toke that for the first time I was actually feeling some sort of effect from it. And it was difficult to put my finger on what it felt like. It was almost like an intense, hushed expectation had settled on the room. Just like when you're in a theatre and the lights go down just before the start of a performance, yeah, something like that. And it was absolutely great to actually feel something, but it certainly wasn't like the effect from mushrooms. It was uh, it's kind of far more lucid. It didn't really hijack my consciousness either like mushrooms tend to do. It was actually quite pleasant. And I was thinking, hooray, at last it's working. And I was just about to take another toke when I noticed the bedroom carpet. I mentioned the carpet effects before in a previous video, and here I was seeing it for the first time. The whole thing appeared to be churning around just like the ocean. I'd seen this phenomenon before on mushrooms, but only when really tripping balls on a really high doses. And I didn't feel all that trippy at this point, but I'm still seeing it. And as well as the churning, geometric patterns were appearing all over it as well. At first I thought they were really there and I wondered who'd put them there. It was exactly as if somebody had left some heavy geometric shaped objects in the carpet and then taken them away to leave the imprints in the squashed down bits of carpet. And if I looked away and then back again, the whole set of patterns would be replaced by an entirely new set, even more amazing than the last. At one stage I actually stood up to have a closer look, and I felt a real vandal for walking on such brilliant works of art. But then I noticed what looked like some semi-legible text in some strange, oldie worldy English font, but the effects were fading quite fast and I had trouble making out more than one or two letters at a time. So like absolute lightning, I grabbed the Dream Maker again to take another toke. But in my haste to get a good toke, I ended up scorching my lungs yet again. And by the time I'd got this sorted, I was already coming down fast. And after this, my lungs and my throat really hurt bad, so I had no choice but to leave it a few days. In hindsight, this all sounds really trivial. But at the time, I'd never seen anything like it, and I was totally blown away. Now, nowadays, I pay little attention other than just using the patterns as a tripometer, but at the time, I was really enthralled by it. And daft as it sounds, this was typical of my first few trips, if, if, well, that is, if you could call them trips. Whatever plans I might have had for exploring my consciousness were abandoned as soon as the carpet patterns emerged, and I just never got tired of gazing and gazing in awe at the complexity. But I was also well aware I was only piddling around with mere threshold doses, and also a very, very crappy technique. So after a while I decided to move on to something a bit more serious. After a few weeks I decided to take pity on my lungs and have a couple of weeks rest, during which time the dream maker had been chucked in the recycling bin, and I built another tool, which was the machine, and this is where I actually started to get some proper successes at long last. A few initial test runs with like 
tiny amounts of spice was enough to convince me that the machine was going to be miles better than the Dream Maker, so I planned my next attempt. The aim this time was to wait for the early hours of the morning to be reasonably sure of silence, resist the distractions of the carpet, toke as much as I humanly could, and then just lie down with some music playing just to see what happens. Now, even after just the first toke, I could tell I was miles further than I'd ever gone before. And another two tokes later, my whole body was fizzing like it was charged with 400,000 volts and heart going absolutely crazy. And the candle that I'd used as a heat source looked like a huge fiery inferno, just like an oil refinery flare stack in full tilt. And a few more tokes and I could see open-eyed visuals everywhere, so lay down and pressed on the music and shut my eyes. Uh, instantly there was an even brighter burst of colours, just like some wild geometric explosions of fireworks everywhere. There was a lot of lovely sparkling gold as well, some amazing shades of like really beautiful deep crimson red and uh, really stunning shades of purple, all churning and pulsating with colossal power and just stunning beauty. And also the bodily fizzing sensation I mentioned, that was also really pleasant. It just felt like it was being in a lovely warm jacuzzi, but, but much better. And the music track, which I was listening to uh, Marble Halls by Enya, sounded like it was filling the whole of creation. It just came across as just unimaginably majestic. It took on an awesome power and beauty, and it just complemented the visuals perfectly. It was just incredible, but it was also quite scary. And of course, when you're seeing visuals, it's not like you're watching them on the TV. What you see seems to be somehow intertwined with your consciousness, and you become really totally engulfed in the whole thing. So obviously you can't just shut your eyes to block it out. It did start to get quite intense, and I just kept repeating in my mind, relax into peace, relax into peace, relax into peace. And it kind of seemed to work. Then to me alarm... It felt exactly like I started to rise physically into the air, and it just seemed to go higher and higher, spiralling upwards. I, mean, I know I didn't really rise, but the feeling of the upward movement was totally convincing, and it felt exactly like I was moving upwards through this beautiful tunnel of some sort, just like an amazing corridor of the most incredible geometric colours and unknown objects. And all the time I can hear this gorgeous, gorgeous music in a most superb detail. I'd experienced music enhancement before on Mushrooms and DXM, but, oh my God, never like this. It was just incredible. Ah, for as long as I live, I can assure you, I'll never, ever forget that music. And I don't hear that many trip reports that mention this physical sense of movement. Does anybody out, out there get this? I just don't seem to get it so much myself these days, which is a real shame. Maybe if I had a long enough break from DMT and then tried again, it would come back. I, I don't know. Anyway, it just continued for a while with me rising and spiring and totally speechless in awe. And then the movement seemed to slow down and stop. And I felt exactly like I was sort of hovering for about 20 seconds in, some, in amongst all these crazy bright things. And that gradually the movement restarted, but this time it was in the opposite direction and reversing the spiral in direction too, slowly, slowly sinking back down to the original position in my bed. But I really, really didn't want to return. And on the way back, I was inwardly cursing myself to eternity for not being braver and having another toke when I could have done, and so being able to go a bit further down this incredible tunnel. Shortly afterwards, the warm, fizzing, physical sensation faded, together with those beautiful visuals. And I opened my eyes, and in the candlelight, because I used the candles as a heat source of the machine, I could see the carpet visuals still there, but even they were fading rapidly. And five minutes later, I was completely back to normal again. I was utterly desperate to go again straight away, but try as I might, I just couldn't get it to work. For me at least, I think an hour is needed to get over some kind of tolerance. I know not everybody's like this. I kind of knew it myself, but I was far too impatient to wait, and I was hoping that somehow I was going to be able to manage it straight away, but predictably it didn't work. But flaming neck, that was just incredible. I just couldn't believe what had just happened. I thought, oh my God. Everybody's got to know about this. And I just paced around the house with my mind spinning. I was thinking, God, this, this should be on every news channel and in every single newspaper. And I looked out the window and I could see a guy walking his dog in the darkness. And 
I just thought, how can he be possibly doing something so normal? He just doesn't realise and he needs to know and he needs to know now. Did you feel like this after your first trip? <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if you did. I, I, I think we all must do to some extent. And still as yet, I know I'm just piffling around with fairly small doses. And it really, really began to dawn on me just what deadly serious stuff this is. DMT really does seem to demand a level of respect, perhaps even exceeding that of mushrooms. It's certainly not to be played with lightly. And even now I look on that experience as marking the real start of my love affair with DMT. And over the next few months I had a whale of a time. I got better at using the machine and I could relax a lot more during a trip. And always I felt nervous before a trip, but generally came back wishing I'd been a bit braver in the first place when toking. I also became a lot better at controlling the fear during a trip. It occurred to me, like a bolt of lightning, that during the trip, fear just wouldn't help at all. <laughs> it was too late for that. So I thought, well, why not just dispense with the fear and just concentrate on the positive emotions? It doesn't always work. But let's face it, who's going to argue with that logic? But yeah, as the trips got deeper, experience like even more crazy visuals, weird auditory effects on the music as well, such as it momentarily cutting out, or maybe wild variations in tempo. And during the peaks I'd sometimes forget that I'd ever been a human and just float around the DMT realm as a point of consciousness in total bliss. And always, after every trip, I was left with an intense sense of total amazement. And in the early days, there were never any difficult trips at all. The worst that ever happened was that occasionally, maybe, it uh, didn't seem like anything particularly exciting was happening over there in the DMT realm. But there was nothing to really leave me with any reason not to go again as soon as I could, and generally, I just couldn't wait. Do you know, I'll never forget those early days. They were such good fun. The next thing that came along, which revolutionised tripping, was the process of learning to use an MAOI or Syrian route to potentiate the trips. At the time I could find almost nothing about it on the web, so I had to learn it all from scratch by trial and error, and, <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes this was a lot more error than trial. But the day my ruin did arrive from eBay, this marked the start of the next phase, which ultimately changed my life forever. I'd really love to speak more about this in a future video, and if so, I hope you can make it along. Hope you found the video of interest. Many thanks for watching. Maximum respect. And I'll catch you again very soon. Bye-bye.